What's up, Wedding Film School? Welcome to Wedding Filmmaking Behind the Scenes. Today we're going to be doing a live stream at a real wedding on Martha's Vineyard. This is going to be the best day ever. This is going to be the best day ever. So in 2020, there was this thing that happened. And it caused many, many, many of our um, events to be shut down. And many of us were trying to figure out how do we make money? How do we make a living during a time where you can only have like 10 people in an event, sometimes less. And, and so for many of us, the obvious option for wedding filmmaking was we have to do live streaming. I actually think in a lot of ways though, the live streaming revolution that happened is here to stay. A lot of couples have a lot of people they want to share their wedding with that aren't able to attend. Uh, maybe they have restrictions on their budget and they can't afford everyone to be able to attend that they would like to. I think it's a valuable lesson to many of us wedding filmmakers that we can make a little extra money doing something a little different with our gear. And so today we're going to be showing you how we do a live stream. We have a live stream out in Martha's Vineyard at a beautiful, beautiful location. Um, it's in the middle of a field, which is kind of crazy when you think about like, I can just go into the middle of a field, roll in my laptop, run the whole thing off a of battery for a couple hours and actually broadcast to the internet. Like that's what we're able to do now. So we're going to be going to the middle of the field, bringing our live streaming rack, running the whole thing off battery. And we're going to be live streaming directly to YouTube on a custom website for the couple. If you've never done live streaming, um, it can be a little hairy, so hopefully we're going to be uh, able to show you a couple of our tips. If you haven't seen our rig build out, go check it out here on YouTube. We have a build out video of our A10 Mini Extreme ISO and how we built the rack up and some of the ideas behind the rack. Hey, let's go get packed up. What's up? It's about 7 a.m. I'm just going to grab a couple batteries I left charging on the charging station yesterday. I always do a dummy check. I always do a dummy check the day of a wedding because even if I pack the night before, I've been known to forget things. Let's hit the road. We're gonna be going to Martha's Vineyard. If you don't know where that is, it's an island off the coast of Massachusetts. Um, and we're gonna be doing a wedding in a place called Chillmark in Martha's Vineyard. So we have to drive to Cape Cod, which is like an hour and 20 minutes away. And then we have to get on a ferry, but actually before the ferry, we get to get on a, uh, a trolley, which is really exciting, or like a shuttle bus or something. So we're basically being herded around like animals all day. We go from a shuttle to a ferry. Um, and then we have to get a <laughs> an Uber or something from the ferry to the ceremony location because they ran out of the ability. Because actually, if you've never been on one of these, they are car ferries. Well, this thing has been sold out for weeks and we haven't been able to get a car ticket. So we have to haul our gear over there and actually find some way of getting to the ceremony location. So a little bit of drama. All right, so the way this works, is we gotta get our stuff. We gotta go buy a ticket for the ferry. And then we gotta head on over to Martha's Vineyard. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, good to go. Thank you. I'm with my son. Just love riding on a shuttle. It's my favorite. So we gotta just, we're gonna hop on a boat right now. On a boat. We made it on the boat. It's gonna be taking us over from Cape Cod over to Martha's Vineyard, uh, which is an island off the coast of Massachusetts. And that's where we're gonna be having our wedding today. So we're gonna be hanging out on a boat. Everybody look at me, come on. 
because I'm sailing on a boat. Um, we're gonna be headed over, and once we get to the island, we're gonna be maybe we'll get lunch. What do you think, Charlie? You wanna? And then we are going to um, try to find an Uber over to the ceremony location, which I actually need to find the address for. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get there like two hours in advance. For for me, like a live stream. I like to get at least an hour and a half early just so I can make sure to test internet connectivity, communicate with the client in case something's not gonna work. Basically what we tell them is, hey, if the live stream doesn't work, which we don't promise because we don't control the internet, um, if there's any failure with the live stream, we're gonna cut this thing live on our ATEM. Give yourself time when you're doing live streaming. Even if you think you can set up all the gear in 20 minutes, give yourself time um, because you never know what the internet is gonna do. We made it! We made it to Martha's Vineyard. The boat didn't sink, everything's good, so we're gonna head over. Let's get some lunch, huh? Trying to figure out where the heck we're going. I like to go a little bit early so I can get breakfast. We got here with plenty of time, so there's no stress, and it's gonna be great. We got some breakfast here. I went with biscuits and gravy today because it's a light meal. It won't fill me up or anything, um, you know, because I'm just doing a live stream, so I'm pretty much standing in one place the whole time so I can digest this biscuits and gravy. Well, we're here at the location, so we're going to find somewhere to put our stuff, and then we're going to check out everything, see how it's going to be. So let's go. Hello, how are you? It's <sighs> too late for me. On the way back would be awesome. This is the ceremony location. Um, and a couple things I want to think about here. We got the sound system here and I'm going to want to get a feed. Whenever you are showing up and you're needing a feed from the DJ, you're either wanting to ask ahead of time, you email, phone, definitely want to talk to that DJ before you just start touching their stuff. But I am going to take a look at least so I can get a game plan. This is a powered speaker and it has a line out right there. And so I am going to probably ask him using a XLR cable if I can have a line out going into my mixer. That way I can just have whatever they have in terms of signal. Um, he's got a lot of wireless going on there, so I want to make sure I'm not stepping on him anyway whatsoever. Um, should be good though, we got a really good sound system, a really good setup here, so I think we're set up for a pretty good uh, stream today. Should I set it up on this side or this side? Like a no, I have two cameras that are getting set up, but then I have like a little like screen and oh. everything to control the live stream. Hi, I'm Joan. Nice to meet you guys. For me, one of the most important things with any wedding is just, uh, it's teamwork. You're working with groups of people and you gotta be friendly. So always say hi, always introduce yourself. We're gonna go introduce ourselves to the bride and her friends and family and just say hi. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Hi ladies, I'm Jason. I'm doing the live stream today. I just wanna say hi. How are you guys doing? It looks beautiful. I'm assuming he's in there doing some wedding thing. All right, well, we're gonna head back down, but I just wanna say hi to everybody. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Oh my we keep it down. There's a lot of traffic here. It's like, that's one of the things I don't like about this location is a lot of traffic. Kind of. <laughs> Can we get the gladiator shot? Now I know what a bride feels like. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you get to any kind of ceremony location is you want to clean all the poop up that's near where you're gonna sit. So. 
when I'm setting up for a live stream, I kind of like work my way inside out. I kind of want to get my base station set up. Um, really, like cameras are kind of one of the last things I really do because of the fact that like your exposures are going to change so much. And so I'm really looking, as long as they work, I'm really looking to get the cameras fine tuned probably like 30 minutes before we're supposed to go live because your light's going to change or everything's going to be changing so it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to dial in those settings super early so we're shooting with uh two fujifilm xt4s doing our live stream um you just want to keep in mind when you're doing live streams you want to if you're not recording in camera you want to make sure you turn off the power saving features so it doesn't just turn off while you're trying to get going. I brought one shotgun mic, even though it's kind of useless. I, I would rather have a little shotgun mic on there than a camera mic. I'll say that. So that's my oh crap audio. So we got 2470. That's our wide shot. And then we got a 7200 and that's going to be kind of a mid shot. We're not going to go super tight with it because it's only a two camera stream. So you don't want to be like so tight on something. And they're also not manned cameras. Normally, if I did a three camera stream, one of them would be manned and I'd be following the bright up the aisle doing that whole thing. We're not doing that for this. So um, yeah, and this is our hotspot. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my signal here and see how good it is. All right, we got three, four bars. I mean, or four or five bars actually. Um, so it's looking pretty good. Um, I feel like we have a pretty good, we have a pretty good signal today. So, so what we're gonna be doing too is we're gonna be taking um, our one of our Teradex is our transmitter, putting it on this magic arm thingy and attaching it onto the tripod and wirelessly streaming with this. And then what's cool about these, what I love about them is they got this right on them. And so, and it's really beefy. Let's see how this thing handled our long journey. It seems okay. So technically, you can plug uh, you can plug this in into that aux input. You can plug it in directly into your ATEM. I kind of just want to try at least at first using the breakout cable and plugging it in directly to my mix pre, so I can have just manual control over each microphone. It'll just be make me feel a little better. So. Uh, like I said, I'm going to ask first, but I'm going to kind of get it at least prepped for everybody kits here so it doesn't be this last minute chaos. We got our, this is stereo receiver, so we got one mic going in there, the other mic going in there, and then this is our line feed coming from the DJ soundboard, and each of them are going to be controlled by channel one, channel two, channel three. Um, What's great is too, I, I'm gonna be able to record ISOs in there in case, in case I need to. It's called a super clamp, by the way. If you do not own a super clamp, I'm telling you, it's the best 15 bucks you're ever gonna spend in video production. These things are so useful. I use them all the time. Like sometimes you can just put a stud on. Like I've used them in weddings before where I just attach it to like a tent pole. And they're just so useful. I love them. Don't show me doing this. <laughs> um, so I actually forgot my little mount for my V mount batteries that power this transmitter. So I'm actually just gonna <laughs> just gonna tape on the V mount, which is totally fine to do. You can totally. If you haven't lived, you're not a filmmaker until you've taped something onto something else. Uh, a gig. Yes. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. We will. You're, you're supposed to remember your clamp. But if you don't remember your clamp, that's why you have gaff tape. All right, so we're going to actually get this thing plugged in and um, see if we're getting signal. And then we're gonna test our HDMI inputs and then our wireless mics. And then we're probably gonna just chill out for a little bit 
and wait for the DJ to come back and we'll test his feed. We got this Explorer 290 from Jackery. We're gonna be actually powering our entire live stream off this and this thing is so incredible. Um, I think it will, it'll do like probably like three hours um, of the whole live stream rig, which is really cool. So this is actually the Teradek Ace 500, uh, which is, I would say, close to their entry level. Um, it's not like they have the Bolt series, which is a lot more expensive. The Ace, I think, is like probably six, $800. Um, we love it. We use it actually in our studio for a, our program monitor, and we use it for live streams, and it's great, and it's been, been awesome so far. Today we're gonna kinda uh, maybe doing a little bit of a head-to-head -head with the uh, with the Hollyland over there, um, but yeah, this is a really great product. I really love the Teradek stuff. In general, when it comes to live streaming weddings, the key here is like you're you want to give yourself enough that you're able to actually have light change a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to set it up in such a way that it has a little bit of a, a little bit of range where you can handle it. Really like your f-stop, I can just close that thing, man. I don't, I don't want tons of depth of field. I want, I wanna make sure that no matter what people do on that stage, that that thing is gonna stay in focus. We're not gonna deal with any of that crap. Just gonna set this thing to daylight for now and we'll go from there. We'll go from there. See, I'm already feeling like how much cleaner this setup is over here with the Hollyland over the, uh, the Ace. So it looks like I'm getting signal from everybody i'm getting audio from everybody um but man this looks darn good that i am on both my cameras losing signal i'm wondering if that's me now they're both back so i find that a little alarming if this keeps happening, I might, I might just run the, a 50 foot HDMI cable over there because I definitely don't. If one camera is kind of ducking in and out, that's okay. I can cut around that. But if two cameras are ducking in and out, that, that doesn't work. I am my computer. So th this video go is really great. It does what's called wireless bonding. And basically there's a SIM card inside this node, this antenna here. And then we're also using this USB it is using a wireless hotspot and what this thing will be doing is picking between the best two signals so we guarantee we have a really solid signal. And then we'll be using the Vidu streaming software to connect. I also got to actually add their graphic for the live stream so we can do that right now. <sighs> Something weird with my computer. I got it. I'm back. So we're just gonna make sure everything's working. So I'm noticing I'm, when the wind is blowing a lot, I'm getting some real signal issues. So I'm gonna see if I can get a table from them and so I can get a little lift. And then I'm also probably gonna run my HDMI cable just to be safe. I don't know if any of you have said if we use this table for something. Hmm? Yeah, I wonder if anyone would care if we use this table for something. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you need a hand? Okay. Oh, we gotta bring it all the way down there, so. Who do you need? We'll, we'll, he'll help me. Sure? Yeah, we're good. Having some, uh, having some connectivity issues with the, the wind and the wireless signals, which is weird that it does that, but. Um, one of the things on these really long cables, I'm 
going to show you this. This says output side. Long HDMI cables often are in one direction. So a lot of times people are like, my cable doesn't work. A lot of them are one direction. So one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're setting up for a ceremony is you want to be looking not just at where the bride and groom are going to be standing, but where the officiant's going to be standing, especially with the live stream. People want to see the person talking. So I'll, let me show you where I think they're going to stand. And then we might have to make an adjustment. Do you know if there's like speeches or other people giving toasts or anything like that? There must be. All right, that sucks. Uh, I'm just getting these set up ahead of time, and we're going to put one on the groom and one on the officiant. And what's good is I think our their back is going to be to the wind, so it should be pretty good. It should be. This is going to okay, you know. You know what? So I would say probably three o'clock. We're gonna go put the microphone on the groom. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the last minute stuff. I'm gonna turn these cameras off now, save some battery life. And yeah, I think we're good to go. One, two. This, you, you won't be getting this yet. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Yeah, it's working. You good? I mean, I might need to test my levels later, but are you playing music beforehand? I'm going to try a different uh, configuration see if I can get rid of this buzz. I'm just going to plug directly into the ATEM, which is not ideal for me, but um, I'd rather use my mix pre. But. So here's what we got going on. We got... Two lav mics going into um, mic input two. One, two, one, two. And then we got line feed coming into mic input one. Here we go. One, two. Frank, I gotta put a mic on him. Oh, oh. oh Frank! Hey, this is ridiculous. I know to have two microphones. But just the backup? Oh no, this is for the live stream. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. So, I feel bad. There's too many cameras down there. No, it's all good. I was like looking, I'm like, oh man, we look like idiots now. No, we're good. We're, we're Gucci. Are you guys good with like the cell phone service? I actually have a thing that it does wireless bonding. Okay. So I have... It, Combines a AT&T and a Ford Verizon hotspot into one. Oh, so it's good. Yeah, you have oh, full bars. Yeah, it's more than good. We did a um, we had a test and it was pretty good. Obviously, the Wi-Fi won't reach down there, right? But no, no Wi-Fi. But All I'm right. good. All right, cool. The uh, couple actually hired another videography team because we were kind of added on last minute for the live stream. So Will is here doing video as well with us. So we got like a lot of cameras. <laughs> How are you? This is a little absurd, but we have, I'd like to be able to get something just for the live stream. One more mic. We can hide it oh. anywhere. I apologize. I know you're mic'd up like crazy. <laughs> yeah, if I start to list, you'll know. <laughs> you're just falling over because too much microphones. My name's Jason, by the way. Oh, I'm Do you really Nina. need to do that? Um, I'm much more comfortable with it. All right, because she just went through a... You could just drop this and put it in your pocket. It's, okay. it's, it's not going to create feedback. I don't think so. Right. It'll be fine. So I could clip it. No, we could... Yeah, you watch this. The, the uh, groom. Oh, so, we're, so how am I going to do that? It's, a, it's already on. You, 
You can yeah. drop it on the inside. He? He's up there. Way up there? Mm hmm. Going but, into surgery. So <laughs> up at the house? Mm -hmm. I don't have a mic. <laughs> um, yeah, we only have it just because <laughs> people on the live stream want to hear him you say. Keep that microphone. I'm I um, I, I want it's it's actually asthma. And I think all of this wind is oh, throwing it off. Oh, and also the allergies are really bad this week. Oh, well, maybe that's it. The at, like my car is covered in no. It's just so that people can hear their vows. So will you, will you um right? And I, I'm supposed to put a mic on him too. So oh my gosh, we have three. This is just um, ridiculous. <laughs> just, I'll probably take the mic off. My don't mic you off. Need this and, one? Uh, you know, the only thing. For my liability sake is if your stuff craps out i'll have a, a backup and then i won't get in trouble so will you just point uh just point the groom out to me when you see him yes so i think i'm gonna go live and um there's just gonna be some ambient audio from kind of the beautiful atmosphere and there's gonna be a, like a logo on the screen and basically what we have is we created a website for the couple and all their friends and family go there. There's no login or anything complicated like that. So I'm gonna go live and uh, hopefully it works. Hopefully, we're gonna go live with this thing, hopefully it works. So here we go. So we're live now and people are arriving. And so we're just gonna kind of go hit our posts, hang out over here and just watch the fun commence. So let's do this. I actually figured out uh, where the speeches are so we moved our camera a little bit so we can make sure catch the speeches if you can collaborate and communicate with DJs and really great relationships can get formed and you get a lot farther than making adversaries these people are awesome great team of people awesome wedding really excited to get this live stream going Um, so I think that went good. Um, I, the only thing is, I think she forgot to tell them to sit down. So they stood for the entire beginning. Um, but 
overall, I think it was fine. And I think they're gonna be really happy. And the cool thing about live streaming, guys, is you can bring people in who aren't able to attend, of course, during uh, you know the pandemic and things. It was uh, really great, but I'll tell you this, I've done four of these in the last like 14 days and we're making good money on it. So live streaming is an awesome thing you can add on to your wedding filmmaking business. And we're gonna try to catch a boat, we're gonna tear down all that stuff, but um, the live stream went good. Now we're just waiting for our Uber and then we're gonna try to catch a ferry back. But I mean, it was an awesome live stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's something that you um, learned a little bit from. Um, live streaming is really tough. The biggest thing I'll tell you is you wanna show up early. You, you wanna give yourself time. Um, I had a couple things go wrong. I had an audio issue. I think I had a bad cable. I'm not sure what it is. I gotta check that out. Um, I had to like five minutes before restart my encoder, a couple little things that because I had plenty of time, it wasn't a big deal um, and I was able to overcome it. Thank you guys so much for checking out Wedding Filmmaking Behind the Scenes. Uh, this is Wedding Film School. We love doing these videos for you guys. Leave a comment below what you liked about it, what you learned, and let us know what you want to see on Wedding Film School.